This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Dacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Dacob. Today we're going to be reviewing a little tiny perfume from Louis Vuitton. Sunsong. Comes in this little yellow sample now, you know, they've given me a couple of these to test out. Um, and it broke. No, it didn't break, but it's here it is. Uh, they're giving me a couple of these to test out, and I what can I say? Uh, let me zoom it in for y'all. So you see, they color these little sample vials in the color of the actual bottles that you're going to get if you buy them. This one happens to be this kind of sun yellow. So it's Sun Song Eau de Parfum Concentration, even though it falls under their Cologne Roundabout or Roundup. I'm going to spray it on in just a second. First and foremost, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes if you haven't already. Thank you if you have subscribed. Mind you, I live stream a lot every Saturday from my main Super Dacob channel where um, I film these videos. So right now I am actually with, in the chat with my co-reviewers live. You can be a part of the live stream every Saturday as well. Everybody's welcome to join in. There's a lot of videos happening, including perfume reviews as well that then go get posted to my Essentially Deco Perfume channel. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. And thank you to all my members and patrons. If you wish to support me on Patreon, it's Super Deco all spelled together. Thank you guys so much for that. Now, <laughs> there you go. Subscribe to my channel, which I said already. So this was a little bit late. But anyway, um, Samsung by Louis Vuitton. Oh, and get your FOMO pop sockets, will ya? Uh, available on Amazon now. Uh, in the Super Deco Amazon collection. Sansong by Louis Vuitton. Floral fragrance for women and men. Jacques Cavalier is the nose behind it, like behind all of the fragrances of the Maison. Top notes. Uh, let's spray it on first before we get to the notes. And I'm spraying a lot of it because you know how it is with these little citrusy thingamajiggies. They're never really... Oof, okay, this one is a little bit intenser than I thought it would be. Um, <clears throat> all right, we got citron, citron in the top note, middle note, orange blossom, base note, musk. Very simple, but simplicity doesn't mean it by it. Let's see. So, uh, right, Sun Song, Louis Vuitton, floral fragrance. The nose is Jacques Cavalier, top note, citron. Blah, blah, blah. Le Cologne Louis Vuitton. You see, it's in the Le Cologne range, even though it's, it's an Eau de Parfum concentration. Is the new line of the Le Parfum Louis Vuitton collection that comes out in April 2019. So before the lockdown. So Cavalier Bel Jacques Cavalier Beltrude signed all creations of this house. Uh, the three fresh cologne-like scents in Eau de Parfum Concentration are named Sunsong Cactus Garden, which we reviewed already, and Afternoon Swim, which we also reviewed on my channel. So you can check out those two perfume reviews already out on my Essentially Jacob uh, channel to see uh, what we think about those, you know. Uh, Louis Vuitton collaborated with LA-based artist Alex Israel, who designed the outer packaging of the new fragrances. The flacons and boxes come in a bright yellow, green, and blue with drawings of a sun, a cactus, and a wave. Sun Song is Sun in a Bottle, a fragrance made from notes of orange blossom, citron, and musk. The fragrance is available as a 100 and 200 milliliter spray bottleette. Boring. I mean... I don't understand how many more citrusy fragrances can a person make <laughs> and keep asking for so much money for them. And this is a synthetic musk at the, at, at the base note, the orange blossom and the citron. It's so... Actually, the funny thing is this one smells really synthetic as opposed to Cactus Garden, for example. Eh. Victoria says no Louis Vuitton here either. Uh, Janet says I don't have any Louis Vuitton perfumes. Um, Gary says I have still not smelled any Louis Vuitton perfume. I was in Selfridges last week and totally forgot. <laughs> Try Cactus Garden, you guys. Cactus Garden is actually really nice. Indieboo5 says not keen on Louis Vuitton perfumes. And this is something interesting, you guys. Now, I know... You know, I've been doing perfume reviews for many years now, and I've, in fact, just started a dedicated 
YouTube channel just to perfumes, which is where you are right now, essentially, Diego. But I have been reviewing for many years on my main channel perfumes as well. So I do have uh, a, a couple of people that, that actually know that I do perfume reviews and that do perfume reviews themselves. And I can tell you that this is something that I've heard before. People saying, mm, Louis Vuitton and perfumes. And this is so sad. A lot of people who are in the perfume smell a vision of it all because they either collect them or they work in the industry whatever nobody's really into Louis Vuitton fragrances and it's a pity because Jacques Cavalier is an incredible perfumer and has done some amazing perfumes and I never stress enough to repeat myself a classique it's his creation Jean-Paul Gaultier's classique is uh, Cavalier so and he has a plethora of other amazing perfumes. He's not exclusive to Louis Vuitton okay he still makes perfumes for other houses as well so Louis Vuitton did not sign him have not locked him into an exclusive contract so that he cannot work with anybody else. So he still has the opportunity to create other things for other brands. But in fact, whenever I talk to people about Louis Vuitton fragrances that are really into perfumes, nobody is really like, oh my God, Louis Vuitton perfumes, that's the place to buy all your perfumes, get the whole range. They're all amazing. I mean, there are people who are going to say, I got two or three. I love this one or that one you're bound to find one or two that you love in a collection that by now has, what, over 20, 28 perfumes? They started in 2016 and they keep adding new ones every year. And, um, yeah, Janet, around $260. Yes, expensive, huh? For a very simple perfume. Jesus says, Louis Vuitton is currently a young millennial Gen Z brand. They wouldn't dare to make anything with character. Citrus is going to sell. You have a point there, Jesus. I mean, it is very bland uh, and it's very shallow. Uh, what we see also in fashion nowadays, nothing has taste, nothing has character, nothing dares to go there. So there's a lot of that going on in their fashion as well as in their perfumes but there are other brands who actually dare go in other directions so it's not that it's just this gen z dominated era where everything is that bland no we see some amazing releases uh, by other houses just saying Ugh, this is actually irritating me more than anything this citron with this musk and orange blossom it's I don't know. I'm waiting a little bit for the dry down. Maybe the musk is going to kind of start tickling that citron in a way that kind of plays well with me. So let's give it a minute. Uh, yeah, Debbie says, you know, rather spend money on a vintage. Diashi says, it's Chanel and Dior for me. Uh, <laughs> Kira says, F that. Um, uh huh. interesting. So Victoria commented to Jesus's comment about the Gen Z's and she said, oh, interesting to know. Uh, but yeah, sad also. Um, D. Ashley says, I don't think of Louis Vuitton when I think of a fragrance I need in my life, says D. Ashley. I mean, ah, I found, uh, Tom says, I found that Louis Vuitton scents are generally not worth the money. Um, Sweet Peach, what's the cactus garden smell like? Thank you. Check out the review of that one uh, also on my channel. To know, to know more about that. Um, I can tell you... So, Diashi, I don't think that Louis Vuitton, when I think of fragrance, I need in my life. This is the point. That a lot of these fashion brands, that are luxury fashion brands, that are higher-end, upper-end fashion brands, they've started this internal thing of, like, releasing these niche fragrances for themselves, for their own houses. And, um, and they're really going for it. Um churning out three, four, five, six of them a year and uh, as an addition to their fashion and their, in Louis Vuitton's case, bags and travel accessories and travel goods. So they're just kind of cashing in on another aspect of the industry of luxury. They're just trying to cash in as much as they can in whatever territory that they can. So um, perfumes can bring in a lot of money. They can bring in a lot of money. And because they're niche and there's this whole attitude of not, you know, this whole trend in the marketing world for these uh, luxury fashion brands in their niche perfume departments, they don't spend money on advertising. They don't spend billions making videos to advertise um, these perfumes. They don't uh, pay a lot. They don't pay any money really to advertise them in any magazine, any fashion magazine. You don't, you know, nowhere. You really don't see it anywhere. So 
they save a lot of money, but they earn a lot of money because as I said, 206, 220, 50, 60 dollars per bottle. Girl, you know that the profit is huge there. You just know. And so it's a way of making an extra buck on the side of the money that they're already earning. And I do believe that in many cases, that's exactly how the perfumes are seen by many, I'm not saying by everybody, okay, but by many perfume houses or not perfume houses, by many of these fashion houses, these perfumes are seen as an extra, as an accessory income on top of everything that they're already earning. You know what I mean? So that that's, that's how I feel most of the Louis Vuitton fragrances smell to me. They smell like an accessory to get some extra money in on top of what they're already earning. Correct me if I'm wrong, because that's just my impression. It's just my opinion. To each their own. Let me smell how this little thing is developing. It's developing some weird moldy tone. Like certain apartments that have carpets in them uh, that have been built in the 70s and 80s and the carpets are still there from that time. It gives me a little bit of that vibe. But also powdery. The musk is kind of... Again, you know, I always say it's very different how the perfume develops here and how it develops there. It's almost like a different type of essential oils that you have here as opposed to there. So they do smell differently. They do dry down slightly different. You should always make that test. Spray on both sides and then after some time you're going to see that they develop differently. They dry down quicker or slower. Here usually perfumes tend to disappear on me quicker. They're gone quicker here than they are here. Oh, it's not good. It, it, I mean, it has a character. I'm not saying it doesn't have character, but I don't like the character I'm smelling here. It um weird that they call this sun song. There's nothing of sun and song. It, you know what it does feel like? Okay. Um, what do we call this? Oh, I mentioned this a, a year ago during our Halloween live streams. I was talking about liminal spaces. Were they liminal or laminal? I think liminal spaces. It's a, Google it. It's really fascinating about these kind of spaces that we know from dreams or memories or of past lives. Or we have these visions of them. Um, usually they feel so like a memory, but like a nightmare at the same time. Usually they're empty, huge spaces, like let's say uh, the really huge um, offices, office spaces from the 70s or 90s, and they're empty. There's no life in, but you feel like there was a life that was there. And whoever the presence that was living there has moved on and has left these architectural structures standing. So you feel that a human touch made them, but there's nothing human left in them. So it feels of a time long gone. So this is how this thing smells like entering a, lim a, luminal, a liminal or liminal space. Liminal, I think, space. Somebody write me, please, in the chats if you know. Liminal spaces, I think it's called. It feels like entering one of those, let's say, skyscraper building from the 70s, completely empty now, and um, 70s architecture. And you're going up. The elevator still works, but there's you know, you're scared to take the elevator because if it stops working, there's nobody alive to save you. So you do the staircase, you walk on the 10th floor because then you get tired. And then you're walking through the corridors of the 10th floor and you open one apartment and the sun is setting. It does smell like a sunset to me. And you enter this apartment. You know, 70s had a very particular light. Also, when photography was taken back then, analog, uh, there was a beautiful golden type of quality to the light when it filtered through mirror or through windows. So you're entering this apartment that remember back then they had those um they didn't have the they had the pull curtains but the curtains weren't just like drapes they were actually turning you know they had those little how would you call them they're like hanging up you know and they just kind of turn like this uh and when, when they when they close they kind of lap over each other and when you open them they turn like this so the sun filters through but when you close them they kind of shut so you're entering this apartment that has this brown 
beige brown carpet. No furniture is left in the apartment because there's nobody living in the skyscraper. And you're entering, and right in front of you, as you open the door, right in front of you, straight on in front of you, is the living room. There's a little corridor space to the left. To the right is the kitchen. To the left is the bathroom. In the front is the living room. And the living room is surrounded. It's at the edge, at the corner of the building. And at the corner of the building, you have mirror, uh, mirrors. Why do I keep saying freaking mirrors instead of windows? You have windows at the corner of the building surrounding the entire corner of the living room and it's a sunset and the sun is filtering through as these little things are kind of just from close they're 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 shifted like this so there's some light filtering through and there's because these little bars are set that way the sun cuts through them and they cast a little shadow um onto the the carpet so you have these kind of like black shadow lines there's a fruit fly here isn't there uh, loving the smell of the perfume probably and um and you have those rays of light cutting the carpet and it's sunset so there's an orangey golden hue but the warmth of the sun hitting the glass windows and then hitting the carpet heats up the carpet so the carpet starts smelling of something that's been around for decades and it's it doesn't smell dirty, but it smells vintage, if you know what I mean. Slightly moldy. That's the that's how this thing smells to me. It it gives me that that vibe of uh looking into the sunset through a mirror of a building built in the 70s and the carpet was is still from the 70s but we're in 2021 but we entered and accessed that building where nobody lives anymore so it does tell a story it does have some sort of character it's unpleasant in a way at least on my skin it has that slight moldy touch Yeah, $260, says Janet, to smell like a moldy carpet. Vertical blinds. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, CC Spy. Vertical blinds. Ver the vertical... Liminal spaces. Yes, I love liminal spaces. Jesus, liminal space. No in or out. In and out by Louis Vuitton. Honestly, you guys, and Louis, you're welcome for the free tip. Um, had they called this one liminal space... I would have liked it. You see, it's all about marketing. It's all about marketing. Uh, it's all about how you decide to name a fragrance. They probably had no time to really develop this at all. They just did it quickly. Whatever. I don't know. All alleged. But it it's not a sun song. It's a liminal space. Now, very conceptual, I know. But marketing... If I were in their marketing team, I would have called this one Liminal Space by Louis Vuitton, and it would have been a bestseller. You call a perfume Liminal Space, and you make it smell like this. Now we're talking. Just gave myself goosebumps. <laughs> it really is just about the marketing. I'm envisioning the whole packaging of this thing, you know, with that kind of empty office space, with that carpet going into that apartment with those window you know just having a cut off part of that apartment printed on the outer packaging of the of this package um really beautiful 70s aesthetic with that kind of sunbeam hitting the carpet that's what you now we're talking you guys yes now we're talking trying to smell anything beyond this morning's uh chlorine chlorine uh chlorine uh workout in the pool says leslie uh, Caitlin says, Jacob, I love how you're describing that. Almost sounds like empty nostalgia, if that makes sense. Yes, Caitlin, empty nostalgia. That's a really good uh, adjective. Victoria says, love you, Jacob. Love you too, Victoria. Pine salt and mold, says the Ashley. It does have a little bit of that zhuzh in it. I hate to think what's actually on that carpet, says Gary. <laughs> a little something, something, Gary. Fana Chez. And uh, Jacob Louis Vuitton needs to hire you. Thank you, Vanna. Ah, the Ashley says, Jacob, I love you for painting a true picture. Thank you so much, Ashley. Louis Vuitton, what are you doing? You just want to, yeah, sun song, easy breezy, California, suns. I get it, girl. But like we've, how many freaking sunset 
perfumes I've been reviewing from you guys. On my channel alone, there might be like five of them. It's enough already. Add a little bit of imagination to your um, perfumes, to your names. To be perfectly honest with you, Sun Song. Sun Song. I mean, if you say it fast enough, Sun Song, it almost sounds like something Asian. And I know this is like terrible for, you know, Sun Song. Sounds like some, you're saying something in Chinese, which again is super politically incorrect. I know. But just saying. And also, Sun Song sounds like something the Incas or the Aztecs could have done. It sounds almost ar archaic that way. So, it, it, sun song, sun song, it doesn't fly out properly, so it doesn't really feel like easy living and the song of the sun, whatever, it, you know. So, this is more a modern take on liminal, on liminal spaces. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, the shade. Last Sunset by Louis Vuitton. Make it the last release ever. Oh, Jesus, you nest. Sounds like Sing Sing the Prison, says Gary. Sun shining through the bars, says Gary. Yeah, that's a good one. Candy Fluff, best reviewer ever. Thank you so much. So sweet of you. Thank you. Yeah, Olfactive Stories. Hey, how you doing, Karim? I agree, the name is not great, right? But... You guys, do me a favor. I mean, if you ever do come across a Louis boutique and uh, you you get to in to smell, and if you remember, because a lot of, you know, when I go to a Louis boutique, I'm like, hey, you know, give me some something, something, you know, let me buy some uh, posh toilettes or something. Oh my God, I almost lost all my makeup now. I actually use this for makeup, as you can see. Got my little Chanel moment going on there. Um, so when I'm at Louis, I'm all giddy for, for stuff like this, so I don't really think about the perfumes. In fact, in fact, what they do, once you purchase something or you're done doing what you... They always try to shift you towards the perfumes at the end. They're like, and have you tested our perfumes yet? You haven't. Come with us. Maybe, which type of smell do you like? And they kind of try to talk to you about the perfumes. They really try hard to sell them. At the end of your journey through the Louis Vuitton boutique, they always try to do that at the end. And they give you samples at the end always. So that's how I get always all these little guys... And I'm super grateful for the samples. Don't get me wrong, you guys, at Louis. Um, but uh, you got to step it up. You got to step it up. So it's so, so anyway, so if you go to Louis, do me a favor. Try this one and envision a liminal space instead of envisioning just hippies celebrating sun. Uh, envision a liminal space while you wear this. It makes more sense to me. Another one that really should have been named liminal space, but conceptually speaking is a liminal space because technically speaking, it doesn't even have a name, that perfume. It's the Comme des Garçons tape, which is officially not called tape. Now, I reviewed it on my channel. You could check out the Comme des Garçons tape review. It's not called tape, but it's supposed to smell of tape in offices and stuff like that. But it's just called Comme des Garçons, which is the brand that made it. So. That perfume, Comme des Garçons, should have called Liminal Space. That one is also very Liminal Space. It smells very different to Sun Song. They have nothing in common, you guys, okay? But just conceptually speaking, I think Comme des Garçons tape could be a different type of Liminal Space, but that one could be also Liminal Space. But this is kind of a 2021 modern take, modern version of a Liminal Space concept. So there you have it, guys. Um, that's... Uh, that's my review, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And that's my review of Sun Song. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, so Kimberly says, and uh, we say, please, yes, hit me up with the 70s vintage moldy space perfume. Thumb up this video, you guys, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It means the world to me. And the YouTube algorithm really needs to know that things are popping. So they love to see the thumbs up in. Miami81 says, the last two times I bought something in Louis Vuitton in the past six months, they always gave me a few different perfume samples. They always do that. It's their way to try to push the perfume so that people get to start buying them. Um, plus, I mean, they have these samples to give out anyway. So what are they going to do? If you're a client, you buy something, of course, they're going to give you a sample. It, they're made for people, for clients, technically, right? Gary says, liminal space, can't get in or out. Still sounds like prison to me. Yes, it is. Um, it is a, a conscious slash subconscious state of the psyche and of the spirit. 
that does feel obnoxious in a way. Uh, liminal spaces, if you Google them, they induce some sort of fear. They make you feel like they're atemporal. There's no time in them, and yet they feel made by humans, but abandoned. And it does feel like you are in the middle of that space without entrance or exit, even though some liminal spaces are portrayed as being outdoors. But even in that case, the outdoors liminal space is also a space where you can just keep on walking for miles and miles and miles and the environment surrounding you never changes. It's like it's in a loop. It's, it's more of a kind of a, a loop type of scenario, if anything. You know, um, but I gotta say, you know, it's a pleasant dry down. I mean, for what it's worth, you know, if this thing was like 50 bucks, you could say interesting. But $260. Ah, the CC Spy says, it smells like no exit by Sartre. Gary says, sounds like the airport makes me feel. The, air the airports are very liminal. But I think that's connected to our psyche because we feel, you know, departure, arrival. A lot of people are not allowed to go past certain control areas because either they don't have a ticket or they don't have a passport and then there's that mystery of what happens when you take off and fly airports are very liminal they have very liminal space potential for sure but this perfume doesn't smell of airport not at all this is more a moldy carpet in a 70s apartment and fascinating though here it smells slightly different than here um it has more of a warm, musky... It's developing more musky here. The musk is popping out here, and it's an interesting musk. Here, it's still citrusy. Ugh, and moldy. While here, it's almost gone, and it's just like the musk, and it's a bit more warm and interesting. But other than that, that was my review of Sansong by Louis Vuitton. If you liked it, thumb it up, subscribe to my channel here, and thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on perfumed love. Love you all, see you soon, take care, bye. Mwah.